Gardner. I'm Sandy Mason with the University of Illinois Extension as the State Master Gardener Coordinator, and we are so glad you've decided to join us. Winter is the perfect time to be thinking about gardening. Maybe you're dying to have spring come to you and early plant something new. Maybe you have all kinds of questions about what happened last year. Maybe things didn't go quite so well. And of course, Mid-American Gardener is your chance to get some answers to your gardening questions. And each show, we have an ever-changing cast of characters. And today is no different. We're going to start out with Dyke. Hello, right. oh, my name is Dyke Barkley down at the Paris area. I run my own place called Barkley Farms Nurseries. I uh, also run the horticulture program down at Lakeland College. Uh, my specialty, I guess, is more perennials, normal grasses, although I call myself a plant geek. Uh, the first question <laughs> I have here coming in email is about wisteria, which seems to be a, a continuing question. Uh, the plant looks to be growing well. Uh, it's filled out their, their swing set. And the big old problem, it's never bloomed. And it's been there eight years. Um, that's one of the frustrating things about wisteria. One person will plant it to do great, another one won't. It's not uncommon for it to take that seven, eight, nine, ten years to bloom. Uh, Oh, don't over fertilize. Uh, you get too much green growth, uh, although it sounds like they were trying to stay away from that. Uh, don't over prune it. It's a big vine. You need a big space. Maybe some tricks are to shock it, some high uh, phosphorus fertilizer, or I've even heard of root pruning. Uh, if you haven't planted wisteria, look at the more American or the otherwise the Kentucky wisteria. It's a little bit smaller, not as flashy in blooms, but it's reliable blooms well, you don't have to do all this mess. It's just not as frustrating as wisteria is in Illinois. Uh, it just, <clears throat> and then the next thing is if it looks good and blooms well, then it almost becomes a weed uh, mm -hmm. in a few yards that I've been in. So yeah. wisteria is frustrating, <laughs> uh, but the Kentucky seems to be maybe a better choice. And I think it's nice using the native one. The native, yeah. I mean, you know, it, yeah. it's really nice. And I had, I had the one, probably the same one that they had, that never bloomed for for the longest time. I got some of the new ones, like Amethyst Falls, and there's yeah. a few other mm -hmm. cultivars that are out there. Blue mm -hmm. Moon, I think, is another one. And it was blooming in the pot when I bought it, and yeah. has bloomed successfully ever. Yeah. So sometimes you have to, you know, off with their yeah. heads. Yeah, I've grown get that, something new. That Blue Moon and only two foot, you know, fairly new two foot plant, and already had blooms on it, yeah. not covered, yeah. but. It's at least already started. It didn't have to wait seven, eight more years. Yeah, yeah. I'm not that patient. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. Who is? Yeah. Yeah. At any rate, yeah. anyway, oh. thanks, uh, Marty. Now, what do you have for us? Hi. Uh, my name is Marty Alanya, and I'm a private landscaper. And we have a question from Andrew. He lives a little farther south than we are, just a bit, here in Illinois. And he has a big shady spot that he'd like to grow some things in. It looks to me like... It's on the north side of the house, and there's a large spreading multi-trunked amur maple. So it provides a lot of shade, and they really enjoy the tree, but nothing seems to want to grow. Um, I know you talked to Andrew about maybe a retaining wall to backfill with some amended soil, but I don't think I'd recommend that. You're right. The maple might not appreciate that. What I would recommend is Maybe a light a tilling, just a lighter tilling. Maple roots are very shallow and you're gonna have trouble with that maple stealing every bit of water you put on there. So I would edge the bed. I would put some well-rotted compost on top of it and I would continue amending it. You could even uh, maybe some sand. I'm familiar with the soil in Southern Illinois and it's a little bit clayey. So um, also, I would try the hosta again. I know you said you tried burginia and hosta and ferns and they didn't do well, but try the hosta again, but try something big. Big hosta with big roots, with big leaves. And I'd also recommend doing maybe some shade loving shrubs, some small ones like some hydrangea. And spring bulbs do very well in the shade because by the time the leaves come on the trees, they're done anyway. And they're spectacular in the spring. So I hope that helps you. Please let us know. It, it, shade is so hard because sometimes it is, it is mm -hmm. so trial and error because sometimes it's shade wet, shade dry. Yeah, it's shade foundation, really it's mm -hmm. alkaline, it's yeah. not, it's compacted, so it, it isn't, yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah. Trial and error, that's yeah, the beauty of it is. Right? Okay, very good, and Mark? Hi, my name is Mark Kemp and I am a landscape architect and I can handle any questions related to uh, landscaping, trees, shrubs, perennials. Um, I have a question here submitted by Denise. Uh, they had a trumpet vine that was growing in a chain link fence. They removed the vine, and now they want to know how, how they can expedite the decay or removal of that stump. 
Um, from the photo, it looks like it's more of a construction challenge than no. necessarily a weed removal <laughs> um, with the irrigation <laughs> uh, valve there and the post right at the same spot. Um, so if you could get the fence peeled up a little bit, maybe you can get a handsaw of some sort and cut it off at the base and then just peel or split the trunk out of the fence if it's intertwined. Um, so there, if you could cut off the top as well, you maybe you could cut, get like a little log splitter and maybe get it split. Once you get it split, it might just kind of just pull out of there. Um, so it's more just uh, a challenge, I guess, than anything, because speeding up the decay of it is gonna be a challenge. And turnpit vines really are one of those that can really be pretty um, vigorous, shall yes. we say? They really are one of those. So you really have <laughs> to, to think about, especially like on a chain link fence, right. when we start planting vines mm -hmm. on them, sometimes it's kind of tough yep. to that first Good place where you choose, you make sure it has enough room and that's where you want it to <laughs> yeah, stay. Very, so. yeah. very beautiful though. How many uh, birds you, like it? You yeah. talked about maybe drilling into the yeah, stump. Yeah, if, if you, you could, could break maybe that do open that just and to get break moisture it up. to inter intertwine yeah. in there, you it know. could speed it up a little bit. I mean, Definitely. just very even good. to help break it up and get it off of there yeah. once you get it. Trumpet vine will take forever to even to rot though. Oh, it's a yeah. pretty tough wood. It so sure does. It's not going to happen overnight. It's stringy no. and yeah. <laughs> so so patience and perseverance yeah. I think is part of it. So great question. Or get and mad. It, you know no. we are excited to announce <laughs> that we're expanding our Mid-American Gardener family to include a podcast. We had these great questions today and but twice a month we'll sit down one-on-one -on -one with a panelist to talk about what they know best and answer questions from viewers that fall within the panelists' area of expertise. The beautiful thing is you'll be able to listen to the 15-minute podcast anytime, anywhere, in the car, on the bus, or even while you're gardening. The first episode is set to be released on Thursday, February 8th. It'll be available in iTunes and also on our website as midamericangardener.org. Next week, we'll let you know who the inaugural expert will be. But in the meantime, do let us know if you have any questions that we can answer either on the show or through the podcast. Email your questions to yourgarden at gmail.com or certainly send us a message via Facebook. Just search for Mid American Gardener. So that's really going to be a lot of fun. Add a little podcast so you can always listen to Mid American Gardener, right? And Certainly, we'll have lots of great panelists to answer your questions there. And so I think we we'll certainly have an opportunity now to have, if you have questions, give us a call. It's 217-333-3495, and we'll be glad to take your questions. So give us a call now. And so I think one of the things, certainly, as we look at, uh, you know, winter's here now. Are there things that people can be thinking about, you know, think about even doing in the garden right now? Is there something that really here, I know it's pretty cold, maybe not to, today, uh, but. Yeah, cut the grass down. Certainly, so many ornamental grasses. Yeah, you could start yeah. on cutting you some could back. You could take a time to start on the trees and shrub pruning. You could yeah, start that you probably could do that. Because yep. I know sometimes I, with you get cabin fever and you just want to do something. So mm -hmm. pruning is a really nice one. Are there yeah. certain things that maybe people shouldn't prune this time of year, would you think of? Lavender. Don't cut that off. <laughs> So maybe don't some of those things like lavender, Hydrangea, maybe what butterfly bush, off. we usually say wait don't on that yeah, one. Don't yeah. do those. Right. So those might be ones we'd actually wait until they actually t start to sprout a little bit, yeah. maybe in April or something yeah. along those lines. Yeah, because there's still going to be a say. cold snap or two that you'll have to deal with. Oh, yeah. 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 And I, where I live, I don't ever prune my roses until the spring because yeah. the rabbits do a lot of pruning for me out where I live. So the little buggers. <laughs> yeah. And <laughs> <laughs> if you have that same issue, you might even want to protect them a little bit from the rabbits in the winter, but definitely, yeah, wait until they break. They break dormancy, which means, you know, fancy word for you see leaves. And when you right. start seeing little green growth, then you're like, oh, look, yay, they're alive. Okay. And then prune the dead back to the live growth, okay. um, especially the Budlia hydrangea. Okay. And we have a caller online to CJ from Urbana. Uh, you have a question about some native vines? Yes. Um, we have a, a fairly small backyard, but a, a large privacy fence, and we'd like to fill fill in some areas with some good vines. You mentioned the trumpet vine. We have one of those, um, but I, I wondered if you have any other suggestions, something to give some color. So native vines. Oh, yeah. Uh, do you have, um, do you have a, are you interested in putting a trellis on your inside of your fence because uh, clematis we are wonderful. There's some that bloom, you know, early and then they bloom again late. So they're, they're practically in bloom most of the summer and they're just really nice. And they're not invasive and they're beautiful. 
Yeah, clematis vine is probably one of your more maintained mm -hmm. uh, decorative blooms. Um, so oh, you yeah. can kind of put that in a lot of different places, contrary to some of the vines that we've already <laughs> talked about that yeah. are yeah. more yeah. of a monster if they like their location. So. Yeah. There, if, you're, if you're specifically looking native, I could think of the native uh, uh, honeysuckle vine. Mm -hmm. I was going to say those. Which is nice. Yeah, so mm -hmm. there's a couple of those that are native. And, uh, and they're not crazy. Trapped hummingbirds and <laughs> that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It can be fragrant, so that's too. Yeah. yeah we yeah. like that too. So you also might think about, particularly since it's privacy fencing, you've got a little protection there. If it's sunny enough, you could do um, a trellis on the inside again and do some climbing roses. Mm -hmm. Color all summer, and the extra protection is really nice for the roses because they sometimes they can be a little persnickety. It just depends on the exposure. So for a lot of, so really the ones we've talked about, you're probably going to have to do, you know, something like a trellis or something because probably, most of these yeah. are not going right. to, they're not I mean, quite like yeah. the trumpet vines and no. stuff that tend to wrap or wisteria yeah. that tend to wrap. Climb so some of them are going to need stuff. some kind of yeah. structure or something to help them out. Something. Yeah. Yeah. And yep. you can, but you can do, you know, um, you can do a trellis that match the fence if you don't want to be able to see them or you can do something that's really decorative that stands out from the fence i mean you know you, whatever you like it's the possibilities are endless tall short okay. wide you know doesn't matter okay very good okay hopefully that gives you some uh, ideas cj and on line four we have ernie from champagne and how soon to kill creeping charlie <laughs> <laughs> so you have a question about creeping charlie i'm thinking that you don't really like him all that much ernie <laughs> we'll get <to> <laughs> Hello? Yes. You have a question about okay. creeping, Charlie? Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, I was... Oh, did we cut out? Yeah, I'm here. Um, I was out today, and it looks like it's... It's growing. Like it's starting to grow? Yeah, yes. it's, it's growing yeah. now, and I'm yeah. wondering if I could just use weed killer, or when, how soon could I start to use weed killer? Okay. okay. Let's know about getting rid of creeping Charlie. Yeah, <laughs> you could. I don't you know. Could. It's pretty cold. Depends on your meaning. You could. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you could. I mean, I'll tell you what. Yeah, you'd probably not. be better. <laughs> it's probably too cold to use yes. herbicides, but you could pull it where you see it growing. If the ground's not frozen, and probably the ground's not frozen, frozen, but it's been a, we had a little thaw here. Um, if the soil's loose enough to get it up, pull it out. Yeah. Usually, yeah. I, yeah. Go ahead. No, I, I think it's too early for chemical yeah. use. It's, yeah. We're not having enough warm days in a row yet yeah. for the chemical to really get in because most of those work by the plant yeah. growing and Take it messes it up, it up yeah. that way. So yeah. um, I, it, it's too early. It's too cold for that yet. Right. Yeah. yeah most of your labels are going to tell you it's going to need to be a, a quite a bit warmer for that yeah. to be actively working within like the plant. 50 degrees more. But y you certainly can remove it. I mean, when you see it, I saw some in my yard the other day too. I was not happy. But it just if you can pull it, just pluck it out. I, you know, personally, I know a lot of people don't like it, but personally, it's actually a really good ground cover underneath. I have some pine trees and She's stuff, and it's really right tough now. to That's get. It. Uh, <laughs> it's really <laughs> tough to get things to grow under pine trees, and it's like yeah. the one thing that'll sure. grow under pine trees is this is this creeping charlie. So I actually, in certain parts of my yard, I have I have creeping charlie as a ground cover. You're benevolent. I it's, you really you are. know it, it looks good. You can't kill the that, stuff. Because if you it take is. it all away, it is pretty. You're still going to have a problem of then what to put back in there yeah and sometimes lawn isn't always the answer so it's got a, it's got flowers on it so I say you know yeah. that's the, but you know that is one of those things that we go <laughs> we talk a lot about the, on the show about you know you know one person's weed is another person's wildflower right, and I right, think we could probably right. all you know talk about certain plants that we love that other people would certainly consider mm -hmm. as as weeds yeah. or I, see I don't mind violets as well as badly you know, that's another one but and they're and they're really hard to eradicate mm -hmm. you know but still I, I, I prefer them over creeping Charlie, but still, you're right. It is beautiful when it blooms. Beautiful. Yeah, it's right. very pretty. And actually, you know, violets are the state flower of Illinois. They are. <laughs> so That's good because they're so we gotta leave some of it where, in the yard. Okay? I'm just saying. I'm just saying. <laughs> some. Just it's saying. only right. <laughs> <laughs> and on line two, we have uh, Steve from Bloomington. Uh, you have a question about Japanese maples. What can we do for you? Yeah. Can you uh, please tell me when's the best time to prune on Japanese maples? Okay, you could pruning. prune now. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't. Are you just pruning for shape, uh, or is or is it hanging too low, or something? Japanese maples don't typically get very much pruned. Yeah, it's hanging growth. too low. I have I have a weeping Japanese maple, and yeah. it's just hanging too low. If it's hanging too low, you might want to uh, 
you could address the structure of it, the bones mm -hmm. of it. I mean, if there's an obvious branch that is lower than you would like, then now you, you could take that off now. Mm -hmm. But if you want to see what's in your way, then if you waited for a full leaf um, to come out, then those are going to basically hang a little bit lower, and then you would know exactly where to prune. But either or, I think you would be fine to kind of go ahead and take some off. Okay, very good. And when you prune, prune flush. Don't don't leave a, a little bit sticking yep. out so it can sprout, unquote, unquote. People do that. It makes me makes us all crazy, yeah. does it yeah. not? Yeah. Yeah. To me, okay, I'm sitting here you. thinking, the Japanese maple, mm -hmm. I mean, it's a dainty tree and doesn't grow, depending on which mm -hmm. one you have. But it would be pruned the same time you'd prune any woody plant. So to answer a bigger question, when's the time to do it? it I usually say Feb Valentine's Day is an easy day to think, to re kind of remember <laughs> the time of the year. Yeah. We're kind of there. We're warming up. I mean, again, yeah. January 50 degrees today, crazy. But, yeah. uh, you know, but this up True. and down, but it's time. You could, you could do it now. Okay. Very good. Very good. And on line three, we have Betty from Champaign. It seems to be a pruning night. Do so we have a question about <laughs> dogwoods? Yes, Betty? I do. Can you hear me? Sure. Mm -hmm. Go right ahead, Betty. Okay. Um, well, I have two dogwoods in my front yard, and they're under a bur oak tree. And so they're understory trees. Mm -hmm. And I've had them for about eight to ten years. Mm -hmm. But I'm thinking now I kind of need to maybe prune them. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering if um, they need to be – I need, I need to know how to prune them. These are if I need to kind of like top them or cut the lower branches um, and, and how I need to do this. Um, if I were you and you've, you're not familiar with this, I would talk to a professional about doing that. I would not top them. Um, you want to prune those for shape um, and it's a good time to do that. But you want to look at the structure of the tree and just making them shorter is not uh, a, a goal. I mean, well, if that is the goal, it's still, you can't just, you know, cut them, cut them clear off. If I were you, I would contact a professional who could recommend what they have in mind, and you can tell them what you have in mind and see if you can come to a common ground there. Um, without seeing the tree, it's a little bit hard to tell, but again, dogwood is another tree that really doesn't need a whole lot of pruning. Yeah, right. I'm just wondering why they we're pruning them. Is there a yeah. specific right. thing we're trying to do? Because yeah. just growing underneath the bur oak, the bur oak should shade them enough to, right. to, to, they, to keep them, to, unless we're... Yeah. Now the key there too, though, is it's a early flowering uh, tree, so mm -hmm. to, to keep those blooms on, to enjoy those, you wouldn't want to prune heavy in any means, and it's not a tree that you would prune heavy. Exactly. Um, so, kind of once again, if it if there's a branch that looks odd, maybe take it back. But other than that, just maybe lightly open it up a little bit, um, just for airflow. Um, but other than that, I would promote the flower over anything else. Yeah, I w I was also thinking when when you're pruning, and you know what you're doing, what you're looking for, you, now is a good time. But like Mark said. They do one thing, and, that, and they do it really well, yeah, and, and they bloom in the spring. So. And flowering dogwoods can yeah. be, they're not a stress-tolerant tree, so no. just mm -mm. to stress them for the heck of it. I, yeah. That's not one tree I would mess with just to be messing. So ask for other advice, and I actually wait yeah. till after it's flowered or late in the flowering and see if there's anything that just seems out of place or that just needs to come off. Other than that, I wouldn't do much to it. Yeah, and I, I don't know at this point if it's a if it's a Cornus Florida or if it's a Cusa or, right. or what it is. and. You, she's you need Florida, but yeah. You need to have somebody. Well, I think Florida as well, but we'll just you, you need to have somebody okay. look at the tree for you. I think. Okay, very good. Well, and it is one of those things that sometimes it, you know they certainly might be able to take a picture and then just email us a uh -huh. picture, right. and we there might be go. able to help you out a little bit more with that. So that might that be good. Maybe good for the podcast. Good for the podcast. Yeah, that'd be good podcast. <laughs> and on line we'll two, we have uh, Shirley <laughs> from Bloomington. You have a question about an evergreen? I think it has uh, some foliage yeah. issues. Um, I have two evergreens that are out in front of my house. And both trees are missing foliage towards the bottom of each tree and on the side. And they've been like that for the last couple of years. And then they, the branches that have no foliage on them, they kind of got like a green and gray um, kind of coating on the mm -hmm. dead branches. Uh, isn't there something in the spring that I can spray on them to kill whatever is making these branches dead or do I have to pull them out? Are we 
we talking more of a spruce tree type of a thing or more of a... Um, it, it's a kind of a spruce uh, Christmas tree. I, Is it I a soft them, needle? Could you like them every year. Can you put your hand in it and it's not real prickly? Is it like a larger or like a wider needle? I mean, is it you, you described it as a shrub. Um, no, it's not a shrub. It's, it's a like a, okay, a, a shape tree. of a Christmas okay. tree. Yeah. yeah. And you don't you don't know what the variety is? Branches have like a coating of grayish mm -hmm. green. No, the foliage. Is yeah. the foliage dark green or is it bluish or is it? Uh, kind of bluish gray. Okay. I think well, I'm like thinking the coating is a secondary. That's just yeah. a dying, yeah. rotting branch. I, yeah. I, usually a lot of evergreens living up, it goes back to the droughts we had a few years ago. It, it, the tree sacrifices those lower limbs, mm -hmm. and once they completely go bare, they'll never put needles back out again. Right. No, so there's not, the, you don't need to spray anything yeah. necessarily. It's a, right. like, like Dyke said, it's a secondary thing that once that's opened up and that branch isn't needed anymore, it's going to start decaying. I think the other question is, is it continuing to keep spreading or did you see this? You said it, yeah. two years, but I'm wondering if it happened and now it's not really spread. I don't know. I would, or but is I, it I would be a moisture yeah. problem in summer drought. Or is it getting more shade than it was before and the foliage is getting shaded out? I mean, this might be another a good one to, to get a picture because I think sometimes mm -hmm. it's really hard for us True. to really kind of tell what's going on. But I really mm -hmm. wonder if it is, this really isn't just a stress issue and it's losing yeah, this lower branch. Because you don't want to treat like something so, if so you don't, don't know the treat it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It could right. be a virus, could yeah. be disease, could right. be. The branches with no foliage are done. They're never coming yeah, back. They're never coming back. Okay. okay. And on line four, we have Mark from Champagne about pruning blue spruce. What can we do for you, Mark? Hi, I have a blue spruce that's out growing its spot and wondering if it can be pruned and how severely it can be pruned. Wow, good question. Pruning spruce. Well, you've got a group of panelists. I don't think any of us are into major pruning like that. <laughs> I, no. Spruces are tough, but that's yeah. one of those you kind of let it, to me, you let it go till you can't stand it and then you're done. Mm -hmm. And then you start over. And yeah. start over again. I, yeah. I've seen them pruned and sheared and, and it starts them in a slow decline. It's just not a tree that's made for that. And then, in my yeah, opinion, and it's labor intensive, and the the look of it is not as right. attractive. It's, I mean, yeah. taking one branch or shortening one, but trying to shape the whole thing like we do with other needled evergreens, I no. It doesn't. Spruces work don't very take well. that. Unfortunately, that's a more of a design and a placement right. issue. So whenever it was originally put in, knowing its eventual mature size. Um, I agree. I agree. Yeah. 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 Sorry, not, sorry about not that. Not the answer, sorry. but I, that's, yeah, I know. enjoy I, it till you can't stand it and then. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I ended up moving one. It was a beautiful tree and it was just too big, the mm -hmm. blue tree. Yeah. So I actually ended up moving it, which which sometimes that's the issue. <laughs> sometimes right. you can actually move right. spruce is pretty easy too. So that may not be the answer you want, Mark. Right, but we yeah. don't know how large answer. it is. Yeah, don't know how <laughs> big anyway, tree is. But. And on line six, we have Art from Muhammad and you have a question about cleaning up underneath pine trees. Yes, I do. Um, I have a couple of large pine trees that are in my yard, and they have a lot of uh, needles that have dropped laying around, uh, and there's a pretty thick coating uh, under mm -hmm. them. I wanted to know if I should be raking those up and getting those out of there. If so, what time of year is best? Whatever. I always leave them. Yeah, it's free mulch. Yeah, yeah it's a natural it mulch. Yeah. And Doesn't it's, hurt the tree. The tree loves it, actually. Yeah, it's just what the tree wants. Now, if you have more than you need and it's excessive for some reason, you could take a little bit of them out there. But yeah, I would leave them I if they're not doing any. They <clears throat> Usually, as soon as you start removing them, you're going to have weeds and things, yeah. unless yep. you got a ground cover. Yep. If it's bare, I think I would, I would leave. Yeah. It's going to yeah. retain moisture. It's going to. I like the no way work. they look, like actually. Yeah, I, I like I, the way it works. I like the way they look, and too. God knew just what <laughs> they needed. You can cross needed. that off your list of things to do. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Don't clean up any of the fine trees. Okay, great. Yeah. And on line five, we have Judith from uh, Lincoln, and you have a question about cactus. Hello? Hi. Yeah. I have a question. <laughs> I have a Christmas cactus, and it's just now blooming mm -hmm. after seven years. Oh, exciting! Yay. Yeah, I've only got one flower on it. <laughs> now, Enjoy well, that one flower. Where well, I have to transplant it? You ought to see it. It's growing all over my dresser in my bedroom. Okay. Well, we're glad it's finally blooming. But what can you? Are there things that people can do to get them into flower? Well, Christmas cactus has, has to be a cold treatment. It's got to get down, not not freezing, but it's got to drop in temperature and then come back up. And that's 
Uh, with modern day houses, we kind of keep them all a steady temperature and that doesn't happen. So you've got to cool it down. I don't know the temperature, it's in the 50s, I thought. Like Am I making that up? Like 55. Yeah, so it's not ridiculously cold. Put it in a room that's not heated as much, a back room, somewhere like that. But, but that's why you're not getting the blooms if the plant looks healthy is mm -hmm. you're not triggering it to go into blooming. It thinks it's still in the in the growing stage. Yeah, yeah, but we're glad you got one flower. Got Yay, one flower, good for yeah. you. <laughs> and we always, we don't have time for all our questions this evening, but remember, you can always email us. And remember, we're gonna have a podcast starting February 8th, so we know you wanna be excited about that one and make sure that you tune in for that, as well as send us your questions and we'll answer them either on the show or on the podcast. So thank you all very much, and I hope everybody is dreaming of spring. Have a great week gardening, thanks.